you realise you're this little cog in a machine? A cog that works 40 to 50 hours a week for 40 to 50 years and for what? I know we've only just met, but it feels comfortable, you know? Does that sound stupid? No, I know what you mean. It's like you meet someone and you just click. I can't believe he's actually doing it. Oh, he's doing it all right. I mean, what kind of guy, what kind of guy bets he can pick up the first girl to walk through those doors? That kind of guy right over there. Because I feel like I've known you for ages. <laughs> and, uh, I... No, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do this. You can't do what? This is going to sound terrible. You see the three people sitting behind me, two guys and a girl. The one spying on us? Yeah, uh, sounds like them. Uh, we all work in the area. Most nights, before and after shifts, we sit around, drink coffee, pass the time, you know, and um, tonight, they saw you come in, Wendy, and sit down by yourself. Um, what time are you due back? Half an hour. Have you spoken to her yet? Spoken to who? Shoo, you two, shh. I'm trying to learn something here. What is it? They bet me I couldn't sit down here and pick you up within 10 minutes. <laughs> they did what? Uh-oh. Oh, looks like he's blown it. Maybe she's actually yeah. got taste. And you expect me to sit here and listen to her? No, I don't. Look, I'm just sorry I ever came over. You didn't deserve this. Uh, and for what it's worth, I meant what I said, you know, about you and me. Uh, it's my stupid fault for blowing it. You're like that sort of girl, and you're... You, you wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wait, this is going to sound stupid. Well, I was sort of pleased when you sat down. Really? Yeah. I mean, before I found out why. <laughs> yeah, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? No, it doesn't sound stupid at all. Um, listen, I have got to go back, but um, can I take your number? Well, I don't know. I'll give anything to know what's going on. Looks like we're about to find out. Well, Vincent. God, how annoying can you be? <laughs> I'm dying here. What happened? I haven't finished with that. I have. That's very mature, Vincent. Well, I am trying to be as one-dimensional as possible. Sun is shining, the weather is sweet, Jay. Boy, makes you want to move. Go dancing to the rescue. Speaking, which name, please? Thank you. Can you spell it, please? And where is that? I'm a hero like Robert De Niro. I'm known as a Rasta man. Got to keep my high protection until time. The sun is shining, yeah. Boy. What direction? Let me speak in which name, please? You got to demonstrate. Demonstrate. You got to demonstrate. Don't fight. Cause the sun is shining. There's nothing else to do As the morning gathers a rainbow I want you to know now That I'm a rainbow with you Whoa, whoa, whoa Yeah, test the eye, test the eye Fear no evil Shining like a liar Shining like a liar 
I read a thing in a magazine, right? There was this landlord in Osaka. He rented out this apartment. Wait, where was this? Osaka. It's in Japan. Right, got you. This landlord rents out an apartment to two different tenants. One of them works night shift. Like us. Yeah, and the other works day shift. Neither of these tenants know about the other one because they work different shifts. They never run into each other. It takes at least six months before they realise they aren't actually living alone. And this is a true story? Yeah. Well, that's rubbish. What about weekends? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're avoiding each other. Look, that's not the point of the story. There's a point? Yeah. Well, it's pretty much the same situation as me and my girlfriend. Oh, I get it. A metaphor, right. And that's why you've been looking for clues that she's still there? Well, yeah. Sean, that is sad, and I mean that in the cruelest sense of the word. So when did you last see her? About three weeks ago now. What's she like? Well, she's great, you know? She's smart, funny, pretty. What kind of clothes does she wear? Well, you know, girls' clothes. What colour underwear? What's that got to do with anything? I'm just trying to establish the facts, you know, like ratings-wise. Figure, face, personality. Give her marks out of ten. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. What I mean is, if you saw her sitting by herself in a bar, would you go chat her up? She's my girlfriend, of course I would. Lenny? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, sorry, what is it? Would you say I'm, um... You know... You know... Uh, can we start again? I think I got lost after about the third word. Useful. Useful? No. Attractive. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, what kind of question is that? I'm just asking. All right. I mean, would you rate me? Jesus, Jody, I don't know. It'll sort itself out. These things always do. You know how it works. No, I don't. What? You said you know it works. I said, no, I don't, because I don't. I think anybody who moves in with his girlfriend is insane. Of course, if you're married, it's probably unavoidable. Otherwise, it's just insane. All right. You're alone in your room, and you want to have, you know, fun for one. What? Oh, shit. You know, a personal touch. A one-man band. I don't believe you're asking me about this. Grow up, Lenny. Listen, would you ever consider doing it about a girl? For example, like me? Uh, Jodie... Just answer the question. Uh, no. Well, I mean, probably not. Why not? Look, Jodie, please. Lenny! Look, I don't know. You're a friend. It'd be rude. and You're not my type. Not your type? What's wrong with me? <laughs> that's it. This Sean, conversation is officially over. If that's a bar of soap, there's going to be trouble. No, it's just this machine, it keeps eating my money. Oh, yeah. You're not meant to put money in it. Oh. You have to give it the funds. Thanks. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. I wouldn't drink the coffee. I really didn't mean to end up working here. I'd always planned to be an astronaut or a racing car driver. Typical boy. Hmm. Just never had a hospital porter down on the list, but well, it pays OK, and I'm pretty much left to my own devices. I don't know a hospital at night. It feels kind of creepy, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> so what about you? What are you doing hanging around here? Sean, you know what I feel like doing? Not having that conversation where two people bore each other with their life stories. <laughs> Didn't realise I was boring you. No, you weren't. Just guy works nights in the hospital. I think I can fill in the blanks.
wait, wait. What are we talking about again? Susan, not your girlfriend. No, not my girlfriend. A girl called Susie at the hospital. I'm drawing a blank here. Fitz, did you ever listen to anything anyone actually ever says? Sure. That hurts. I listen. If I don't take in all the details or hear every word you say, it's because I'm a non judgmental listener. A non judgmental listener? Yeah, I'm an ear you can trust. The point is, I ask her what she's doing hanging around the hospital. She changes the subject. They think that's a little weird. Sean, my last three girlfriends have all said they're into modern jazz. That's weird. This is just a guy with too much time in his hands playing it being Columbo. There's a difference. I'm going to get myself another coffee. Like you need any more coffee. Sean. I personally think you're very attractive. No, Sean, check your watch. Uh-huh. If you go now, you can get your train, get home, she'll be there, you can sort out this problem. She might not be there, that is this problem. Sean, I'm right, you know I'm right, I'm always right. Okay. Thanks. the time you do not want to know ah oh, this is killing me it's killing you you should buy a watch i've got a watch a watch that works this works it's a lucky charm it's the fabled watch yeah, of errol yeah yeah i know the fabled watch of errol flint don't mock the power while we stand around here putting fucking tins on shelves there are beautiful 19 year old girls in short skirts and tight tops going to clubs Drinking, dancing, hormones exploding like atom bombs. But let's not get too upset here. There's always that final hour when the ladies get desperate and their standards plummet faster than the speed of light. And that, that is the same hour I get off work. <clears throat> What I really don't get is why I have to wear a uniform, you know? I mean, it's not so I ever have to see anyone. <laughs> Let's face it, I could do this job in a monkey outfit, no one would know. Well, you could do it in a monkey outfit, but personally, I just love a man in uniform. Director Lenny speaking, which name? Thank you. Hi there, it's... Oh, oh you, you recognise the voice. Thank you. 
when we started. I'm a big girl, I can handle myself. I thought it would be different. Look, this was supposed to be fun, okay? I mean, let's fall around, it'll be fun. When it was fun. It's like a game, right? Right? I suppose. Yeah, like any game, there were rules, babe. And one of the rules was we could only do this three times. <laughs> you know, three strikes and you're out. I thought you were joking. Ah, oh, don't joke about this stuff. Vince! Hey, come on, don't make me out to be a bastard over this. If I sound harsh, it's because I'm being honest. I'd expect you to appreciate that. Maybe I better just go. No, don't be like that. Come on. Come back to bed. You know, we can watch TV or something. I just got a cable. You ever seen the Home Shopping Channel? No. Oh, you've got to see it. It's like the last refuge of civilization. You've got to see some of the crap these people are selling. Come on, you. Now, just because this is the last time we're going to be together doesn't mean we have to part on bad terms, does it? No, I suppose not. And that is impressive, considering that it comes with the chain too. <coughs> Want a cigarette? I don't smoke. That's good. And we hope that you will experience... You know that thing when you see some couple in the street having a drunken argument? She's yelling at him because he never does anything for her, never makes any big romantic gestures. Oh, yeah, I love watching them. Right, well, that was the argument that we had. Oh. I said some things that I regret. She said some things she should definitely regret, and it just snowballed from there. But that was, what, weeks ago? It started out as I was just avoiding her. That turned into habit, and now, well, I'm just getting this feeling that... Sean, you want a simple solution? Hardware store. Big pot of paint, paintbrush. You go home, you paint on the bedroom wall in big fuck-off letters. Do you still live here? You come home from work one day and she's standing there throwing a hissy fit about the state of the wallpaper. Then I think you've got your answer. No, I don't know. We just redecorated. Sure. No, OK, look. Listen, what if I was to do that? And what if it turns out that it is all over between us? That's what I'm really scared of. That sounds like... What's that guy thing called? The fear? Yeah, the fear. I've worked in jobs like these for years. I devised so many ways to make the clock go faster. First of all, tried doing the job in record time. Well, that sounds like fun. Then seeing how slow I could go. Then marking off the quarter hours, then dividing them up into five minute segments. But you can't beat the clock. That makes me feel much better. Yeah, well, try not to think about it, because if you do, you'll see the big picture. And that's not pretty. Then you realize you're this little cog in a machine. A cog that works 40 to 50 hours a week for 40 to 50 years and for what? So you can spend your declining years sitting in an easy chair pissing and shitting yourself. Joe, seat. Joe, much as I love you, man, that's depressing. Yeah, well, let me put it another way. What, for example, are you going to do when your looks go? <sighs> it's never going to happen. This face defies plastic surgery. Besides, I got this. Vinny, lovers leave, parties end, bad jobs go on forever. Seriously. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Big question. Let's see. Save up some money, pay off my debts. Leave this Mickey Mouse job for dust. In fact, that's probably top of my list. And then what? Well, then I'll get a better job, move into a nicer flat, probably continue dating girls with severe emotional problems. And then what? Then? Uh-huh. You know, I think I preferred it when you were rambling on about being a cog in the machine. I mean, I wasn't listening to half of it, but at least it didn't concern me. Oh, come on, Joe, give me a break. Just think about it. No, the whole reason I do a mind-numbing job is so I don't have to think. Hence, mind-numbing.
Susie. Sean, what are you doing? Snooping around? No. Well, yeah. Um, Sean, meet David. David, meet Sean. David. Yeah, he's my boyfriend. Well, aren't you going to shake his hand? Sean, I was joking. I just don't know how long I can keep going. What's to know? You sit there taking calls, giving out phone numbers. A couple of years' time, they'll train monkeys to do it and you can find yourself a new job. I don't know, Vincent. I mean, see last night. I'm sitting there at my terminal and I'm looking at the guy who sits across from me. And I've been there nearly no. two years and this guy probably sits across from me six, seven nights a week. And I realise I don't even know his name, where he's from, you know, anything. And I look around the place and I know maybe four or five people's names at a push. This is meant to be the heart of the communications industry, for Christ's sake. Two years, and I can't even name half the people I work with. Fuck them. What? Fuck them. Who wants to know the names of a bunch of wingdings, right? Lenny, these people spend their time giving out phone numbers to the general public. They're fucking telephone operators. Why would you want to know their names? Yeah, but I'm a telephone operator. <sighs> sure, sure. Look, maybe I'm not the best person to confide in, but I think you're looking at it all wrong. It's just a job. You plug in, switch off, then get the fuck out and wait for payday. That wasn't really what I was getting. See, what you need is a decent hobby, an interest outside of work to help those eight-hour shifts fly by. A hobby like what you have? That's right, like I have. And then, boom, three strikes and they're out. Then I just get myself a new hobby. Like I say, you need to get yourself a decent hobby. I can't do that. Why not? Can you keep a secret? Lenny, this is me, Vincent, you're talking to. Things have been on the slide between us for months, really. I was just about to finish it with him. I even had the whole strategy worked out, the whole, you know, it's not you, it's me routine. It's a good routine. Yeah, yeah, it is. They rushed into the nearest hospital, but it was too late. He'd already slipped into a coma. Shit. It's terrible. Yeah, you're telling me. I couldn't split up with him then. I'd have been the bitch of the year. And the thing is, I've only been going out with him five or six months. He's been in a fucking coma for longer than that. <laughs> I've got porno reactions. You got what? Porno reactions. Porno reactions? Jesus, Vincent, keep it down. What the hell are porno reactions? I knew this was a bad idea. Lenny. Before I worked in the call centre, mm. I had a job for two or three years. Writing for men only. Writing for what? You know, men only. The jazz mag. Yeah, yeah, I'm well aware what men only is. You wrote for it. Fuck yeah. Fuck me. Well, you know the kind of thing. Dear men only. I never thought I'd write to a magazine such as yours, but something happened to me last week I just had to share with you. I'm an attractive blonde, aged 19, small but perfectly formed, with a bust size that can only be described as a handful. I work in the local hairdressing salon and often flirt with the customers, but none really caught my eye until I saw Peter, a regular who just returned from work abroad. Well, with his rippling muscles, suntan and sexy smile, I could hardly resist when he... Continued, page 64, etc., etc., etc. I spent so long writing that shit that now I've got porno reactions to everything. And how do these porno reactions manifest themselves? It's not funny. Every girl I meet, every girl I half like, my mind goes click. Starts imagining them in some X-rated skin flick. Every girl? Yeah. I mean, automatically. It's a fucking curse. It's not a fucking curse. It's a gift. Vincent. 
Don't you tell a soul. So tell me about your girlfriend. How do you know I've got a girlfriend? Sure, you got it written all over your face. Trust me. Not much to tell, really. Oh, wait. You actually examine the soap? Yeah. To see if it's, you know, getting smaller. See if she still actually lives with me. <laughs> Sean, that's really sad. And I mean that in the cruelest sense of the word. Thanks. No, I mean it. You should just take the night off work and find out. Oh, believe me, I know. It's just... With everything in a state of limbo, you get used to it. It's almost... And this is fucking sad, but it's almost comforting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. <clears throat> well, better get going. I've got a job to do. Some job? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Can I ask you a question? Let me guess. What's a girl like you doing in a nice place like this? <laughs> no. A nice girl like you doing in a place like this. It's a long story. Well, just give me the short version then. All right. I was out with some friends. I wasn't really enjoying it. And I couldn't face going home. So you came here? Thought I'd drown my sorrows. In hot chocolate? You wouldn't understand. It's a girl thing. I've got to admit, the whole thing is just very, very weird, in a weird sort of way. <laughs> wait, wait, let me get this right. You saw this documentary on TV about this University of Philadelphia mm. where they have a code of conduct <laughs> regarding <laughs> boys, boys and, and girls, girls, right? <laughs> And at each stage of the date, they have to ask permission to do things, right? Yeah. Give me an example. Oh, OK. Um, <clears throat> Let's say it's you and me, and we're walking through the snowbound streets of Philadelphia, and I look over to you, and I think, wow, this girl is nice. Nice? <laughs> you don't like nice? Well, seeing as the streets of Philadelphia were all snowbound, I was hoping for something a wee bit more imaginative. OK. Um... This girl is great, and I think <laughs> I'd like to hold this girl's hand. So I'd have to ask you, is it okay to hold your hand? And you'd say yes or no. So we walk on for a bit. I'm looking over, thinking I'd like to kiss this girl. So I'd have to ask you, is it okay to kiss you? And you'd say yes or no again. And how long is this going on for? All the way home, every stage. Kissing, caressing, undressing. Whoa, 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 whoa. How much have I had to drink by that point? Well, as long as you can still write your name, I'd be OK. Because if we were to go ahead and go all the way, you'd have to sign a contract of consent, especially drawn up by the university itself. A contract? Mm. What else do we need? A lawyer present. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> That's stupid. One of the nicest parts of romance is, you know, not knowing what's coming next. The moment before the kiss, that sort of thing. What's your full name? Madeline. Madeline Sosokolovich. Is that one Z or two? Three. Vincent. Your name's Vincent. That's right. Hey, you sleeping beauty. Uh. Oh, shit, I missed the ending. What ending? Vincent was firing into some girl. Looked odds on to hit the target. It's always something to see. Yep, you really missed out. You alright? Yeah. No, not really. What's up? No, that's a long story. Maybe another time. You want to get out of here? And go for a drive or something? Ha, ha, ha.
I'm just going to freshen up. Sure. get the feeling we're missing out on something. Yeah, all the time. Don't touch that down! It's the fucking car. The radio down gets stuck on some fucking 80s revival station. Switch it off. It doesn't switch off. I just want you to know that I don't normally do this sort of thing. I remember when I was 13, I went with this girl in my class to the school disco, sat and watched her dance all night long with her friends until the lights went up. I'm sick of it, you know? The fear. Oh, yeah, the fear. Still, if it's over, it's over. Fuck, for all I know, it could be over between me and my girlfriend for weeks now. It's very weird, you know that. What? But you always refer to the girl as her or my girlfriend. Parents not give her a name. Yeah. Madeline. It's a cool name. Yeah. You should hear a surname. I'm just trying to explain something here. We're acquaintances, not friends. Well, I, for one, am crushed. Now, see, I don't think that's true. We spend most nights of the week hanging out here, talking crap, you know? And that's what friends are for. Here's the litmus test. Three questions. Number one, what's my surname? OK, two, where do I work? Uh, um, something to do with children, right? And three, what's my favourite colour? Beige. No, green. I remember because we had that big argument about it a couple of weeks ago. It's definitely green. One out of three. Magnificent. So what are you getting at? That we don't pay attention to details? No, that we're not really friends. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy sitting here, passing the time, talking, talking, talking. But you've got to admit, it's out of convenience rather than anything deeper. I still think we're friends. It's not a personal thing. How's friendship not a personal thing, Jody? Listen, Lenny, I need a favour. What kind of favour? Car favour, right now. What? Well, right now? I, I just got here. I know, but it's important. Lenny, very important. All right, well, let me just say hello to Sean. No, we then... have to go now. What? Come on. How long was I away for? Vincent, what's going on? Vincent? It's, uh, it's about Sean. 
What do you mean it's about Vincent? It's the way he treats me, you know. I might as well have second-class citizens stamped on my forehead. Jodie, he's just like that. You're a girl. He's Vincent. It pisses me off no end. The way he and Lenny are always running around doing shit. It makes me feel like a wee girl stamping her feet at the bottom of the tree while the boys play up in the treehouse. You want to play in Vincent and Lenny's treehouse? No. It'd just be nice to be invited up occasionally. Remember the other night when that girl came into the cafe? Yeah. I was sitting there going through so many old tried and tested routines. Thought I'd maybe have to come up with something new, seeing as she was Dutch or something. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Everything's fine. You're serious? You slept with Sean's girlfriend, Madeline, right? Yeah, Madeline. Jesus, Vincent, that's pretty off the scale. Do you know how many girls I've fucked in the past year? That's off the scale. That was a shitty thing to do. I know. I didn't even want to do it, but it was, you know, all out of my hands. Out of your hands? Well, figuratively speaking, yeah. It was the little guys downstairs. Millions of them, all swimming about, looking for an exit. They should fucking rewrite the biology books, because when it comes to the brains versus the little guys downstairs, always bet on the little guys. Is that what you're going to tell Sean? I'm not going to tell Sean. You've got to tell him. Why should I tell him? He's your friend. Huh? Like Jody says, we're acquaintances, not friends. That shit, that is. She just says that to kid on that she's better than the rest of us. Do you want to know something about you? I don't know. You come to me, right, because you fucked Sean's girlfriend and you're worried about it. That sounds as if you're actually wrapped with guilt. <laughs> and you're looking for me to set your mind at rest because you know you fucked over a friend. You know, for a while it almost seemed funny. Two people living together who never saw each other, but now... Not funny. You know how it is. No. Well, it's the little things. It's yeah. waking up next to her in the morning. The way her hair looks. Her hair? Every time we go to the cinema, we always hold hands throughout the entire movie. Aww. There's always someone one or two rows behind with an annoying laugh. Ask for a refund. Yeah, well, anyway, I've decided that tonight I'm going to do it. I'm going to get someone to punch out my time card for me, go home, see Madeline, and tell her how I feel. About her hair? I've been really stupid. I didn't realise how much I missed her until... Well... Until... Wait, 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 let me guess. I think I can see where this one is heading, if it's a typical guy thing. You were either drunk and heard a song on the jukebox that reminded you of her, or you had your dick in someone else. Sean. It was the dick thing. Really? Shit. I wasn't joking, I just thought it was a smart thing to say. With everything in the state of limbo, you get used to it. It's almost... And this is fucking sad, but it's almost comforting, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, better get back to it. I've got a job to do. Some job. Yeah. Sean. You know the nice thing about being in limbo? You can do anything. Vincent, I can't believe you did that. Sean. What? You just called me Vincent? You're not going to turn into him, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to turn into Vincent. I'm going to sort everything out. Hey, Lenny, you actually wrote for this magazine? Yeah, about two years ago. I used to love these letters. Gave me situations to aspire to. I'm not easily impressed, but I gotta say, I'm impressed. Ooh. Vincent, how can I put this? About a month or so ago, this new girl starts at work. The early evening shift. Hello. Yeah, hello. She's something else too, you know? The minute I see her, I can't eat, I can't sleep. Sounds like the real thing. What's a guy like me gonna do? I've got porno reactions, for Christ's sake. There's no way I can talk to her when I'm face to face well, with a face. So I do something stupid. I start phoning her on my brakes. Pretend I'm a high-flying businessman. Just come back from uh, Hong Kong. Making jokes, chatting away, you know. You're calling her under an assumed name? That's stalking, surely? No, it's not stalking. 
Right. You see the film Cyrano de Bergerac? No. Well, the point is, over the phone, we click, really click, you know, laughing, joking. She even says she's looking forward to me calling. This is all very touching, Lenny. Wait. It gets worse. The other night, I bit the bullet. I asked her out over the phone. What did she say? Well, she said yes. It was a bit nerve-wracking, but she said yes. Tonight. Tonight? Let me get this straight. She's expecting a jet-setting businessman to show up, but instead she's going to get mild-mannered Lenny the stalker. I know. I know. Jesus, Lenny. How do you think she's going to react to your little deception? I don't know. I mean, well, you deceive women all the time. Yeah, the proper way, behind their backs. This way lies insanity and ruin, Lenny. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's simple. Don't show up. Don't do anything. Don't ever call her again. Just walk away. Just walk away from it. Why is it locked? Fuck knows. It's a security thing. What, to keep people out or people like you in? Listen, Lenny, remember what I said. Just walk away. By the way, your boyfriend's back. How you doing, Lenny? I see you decided to take my advice and not show up. Yeah, well, don't worry. She's been and gone. What happened? I just couldn't do it. She was there and she waited for a bit and I sat here like the useless fucking lump that I am. Then she left. And I still sat here going over and over the sorry fucking mess that passes for my life. You couldn't do it? That's because you build it up to something it isn't. And when you build it up, you also build up the fear. It's no big deal. It's just talking to someone. Vincent, I don't really need this just now. Yeah, you do. Otherwise, you'll never learn. Look, I could pick any girl here, go up, hit on her, and it would mean fuck all. Because I don't build it up. I don't open up the door, invite the fear in for a coffee. It means fuck all because it is fuck all. Watch. Wait, Vincent, this really isn't necessary. Hi. You want to hear something strange? I think so. Yeah. I saw this thing on TV about Philadelphia. Actually, no, it's the University of Philadelphia. Apparently, they have this sort of code there. Well, no, it's... Hold on. Do you know who I am? What? No. I just saw you sitting here alone and... Oh, I get it. Look, if it's all the same to you, I'm waiting for someone. Been waiting long? Ten minutes more, then I'm gone. So, this thing in Philadelphia, you've got to hear it to believe it. Look, I don't want to be rude, but I'm waiting for someone. Boyfriend. No. It's a guy I speak to on the phone at work. Stupid, huh? Shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a shithead. 
I'm sorry. And if you had realised, would that have made such a difference? What are you talking about? Of course it would. Have you spoken to Sean yet? That's a totally different issue, Lenny. Yeah, right. What are you waiting for? Retirement. Fucking clock just moved backwards. I'm serious, Benny. Young man, you're developing a very serious attitude problem to this job. Benny. In a minute, I've got to move these pallets or Alex's going to kill us. Benny. Just keep watching the clock, Joe. <laughs> Joe. Hey. Hey. Joe. 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 Shit. What are you gawking at? Call a fucking ambulance, for Christ's sake. Who's first aid? Who's first aid? There's meant to be a fucking first aid here. He's not breathing right. Look after him. Where's the ambulance? Did you call the fucking ambulance? Yeah, yeah, it's on its way. Fuck. Not working again tonight? <laughs> no, not tonight. I don't know. Somebody's meant to be first fucking aid. Try and breathe into his mouth or something. His mouth? Just fucking do it. Thank fuck. Come on. Shift it. The keys. Who's got the fucking keys? The keys. Who's got the fucking keys? What the hell is going on? Alec, give me the keys. I haven't got the keys. I gave them to one of the grocery oh, boys. fuck, Alec! Who's got the fucking door keys? Please. Who's got the keys? What are you doing here? Oh, you know, just hanging out. You okay? No, I'm not. This old guy I work with, Joe, just had a heart attack. Didn't make it. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Do you know him well? Yeah, <laughs> pretty well. We don't really know anything about each other, do we? What? Oh, OK. 
come on. I don't know the name of some guy that you work with. That doesn't mean anything. I bet you don't know the names of half the people I work with. I know for a fact Lenny doesn't know the names of anybody he works with. Yeah, I suppose. Vincent, we're friends. The rest is just details. I've had one of those days when the clock just wouldn't move quick enough for me. All the time. You got somewhere important to go? Yeah. I've got to find my girlfriend and tell her that I love her. Probably sounds pretty lame to you. No, not at all. Sean, there's something I've got to tell you. <laughs> you know you've got a great smile. Doesn't mean it isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I know this is a little off the scale. <laughs> you joking, right? I mean, this has to be a joke. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise who she was until we'd gone too far. You knew who she was before you. That is fucking low. I know. I can't believe I'm just shot. I know what I did is so wrong. I just want to find a way to make it up to you. And how are you going to do that? Are you going to fly around the world the wrong way? And turn back time so that you can defuck my girlfriend? It wasn't just my fault. You were ignoring oh, her. Fuck you. Oh. It wasn't my fault. Then fuck it, man. I didn't even want to do it. <laughs> Look, it was the little guys downstairs. They're in the driver's seat. <laughs> But you're gonna spend weeks moping about this, or are you finally gonna fucking do something? And I'll tell you something else. I don't care if I ever see him again. Look at you. What? You're turning into action man. What about Madeline? Well, somebody phoned. But when I picked it up, they held on for a minute, then hung up. Lenny, you work in telecommunications. Uh-huh. You recognise this dining code? <laughs> mm -mm. No, not many people would. It's this horrible little seaside town out in the middle of nowhere. You know, the kind of place people go out of their way to avoid. A friend of Madeline's has an aunt out there. It was Madeline who called. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. It's her kind of crisis centre. A crisis centre? It's a girl thing. A girl thing? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out there, find her. I'm coming too. What? I'm coming too. Sean, you need a car, you need a driver. I'm that guy. Well, I wasn't planning on bringing anyone else, but... OK. That's it, I'm coming too. What? You really think I'm going to let the two of you go out there unsupervised? There's an accident waiting to happen. Okay, okay, bring the whole gang along. Where is this place? It's, uh... Lift up your cup, Lenny. It's there. Be 
car sick. It's your car. I know. I'm fine in the city. It's just when I get out in the countryside. You OK? Kind of. My eyes are smarting a bit. Yeah, mine too. Mine three. Must be the light or something. <laughs> Lenny, don't be so square. Switch the radio on. No. If it goes on, it doesn't go off. Not even when you switch the engine off. Jody, when you switch the engine off, it goes off. When you switch it back on, it's back on. That's stupid. I know it's stupid. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. You know, I've never felt guilty about anything in my life, ever. But this time I fucked up. I really fucked up, Sean. You've got a real nerve showing up here. I don't want us to fall out. It's a bit late for that. Anything I can do, I'll do it. Anything. Yeah, there is something. Just name it. Give me your watch. Hey? You heard me. Mate, this watch belonged to Errol Flynn. It doesn't even work anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about the watch. Wait, what? this watch? This watch? Between you and me, I think it's where I get my power from. Oh, and I thought it was a little guy's downstairs. It's a unique combination. Vincent, just give me the watch. This watch really belongs to Earl Flynn, huh? Yeah. I've even got a certificate of ownership that proves it. What? I think we're even now. Even? All I did was fuck your girlfriend. That watch belonged to Errol Flynn. Listen, you really want me to hit you again? Leave it like a girl anyway. Yeah? Well, I imagine you've been hit by a lot of girls. Get out of the car. Yeah. In the near future.
think I need to work out a new plan. There was an old plan? Yeah, there was a plan. But the plan was to come here, find Madeline, and sort things out. And then what? And then, well, if the plan went according to plan, we'd go home together to the city. And then what? And then bowling. We'd go bowling or something, you know, do the fun things. Go on dates. And then what? And then, well, I guess I'd swap my night shift for a day shift so I didn't feel as though I had permanent jet lag without actually ever going anywhere. Oh. And then what? What is it with you? What? I'm not disagreeing with him. I just don't see what else there is. Yeah, we can swap our Mickey Mouse night jobs for Mickey Mouse day jobs, but for what? For nine to five? Work in an office, commute with everyone else to and from work, in bed by 11, up by 7. Just don't see what the big payoff is. Vincent. You really are in a bad mood. No, I'm not in a bad mood, I'm just being realistic. I mean, can you really say your life would be significantly better if you swap your night shift for a day shift? Well, probably if I still had a job. What? Say that again. I got fired. When? When? Uh, it was about two weeks ago. Whoa. Well, what happened? It's a long story. Well, just give us the short version. The short version? I hated my job, really hated it. It showed they fired me because they said I was bringing everyone else down. But you work on a conveyor belt. Yeah, I know. Hang on, hang on. If you've been out of a job for two weeks, how come you're still hanging around every night with us acquaintances? Yeah. Because... Because nothing better to do. <laughs> That's the single most depressing thing I think I've ever heard. Thanks. Look, guys, I appreciate the support, but you really don't have to hang around here with me. Why don't you go off and have some fun? You can have fun here. It was rhetorical. Oh. OK. Come on, Lenny, let's go. Hey, invite me. What? Invite me. Sorry? Invite me, invite me, invite me, invite me, invite me! OK. Jodie, would you like to come with us? Where are you going? We're going to play crazy golf. No, thank you. What a depressing place. I could feel the life being sucked out of me. That was weird, wasn't it? Hardly. It's just a matter of keeping your eye on the ball. Like I say, it's a game for idiots. No, I meant weird, as in Jodie. Oh, man. But you can hardly blame her. We do kind of cut her out of the loop. Almost makes me feel bad. Really? Yeah. I thought you didn't like Jodie. Jodie? No, I think she's fucking great. You do? Yeah. First time I met her, I tried to hit on her. No. Of course, she knocked me back straight away. As far-fetched as that sounds. Just as well, though. I think she's way too smart for me. Well, you don't act like it. Of course I don't act like it. Even though we're friends, she's still a girl. A line has to be drawn. Wait. You said friends. Yeah. So everyone is friends? Of course we're friends. Look around you. We're standing on a freezing golf course, surrounded by King Kong and God knows what else, in the middle of fucking nowhere. That's what friends are for. Okay. Vincent, get back on the clock. What is it? Whatever you do, don't look around. Shit! Shit! Oh, shit! What is it? Bad news, I looked. Oh, shit! They're coming over. This isn't good. This is not good. Is this good? As opposed to bad, no, it's not good. I can't do it. I, I can't face Gail. What are you talking about? That's Madeline. Next to Gail, that's Madeline. Yes, you idiot. You think I'll be worried about Gail? You're the one who's stalking her. It's Madeline that's the problem. Oh, shit. Why are they both here? And why are they coming over? Oh, what do they want? And what, what are we going to do? Right, Lenny, snap out of it. We have to stay cool. Come on, I've been in tighter spots than this. Just act dumb. Whatever happens, don't confess. Don't mention Sean at all. In fact, don't even speak if you can help it. All right?
flowers. I should have bought her flowers. Flowers die. Well, chocolates then. They're romantic, right? Chocolates make you fat. Well, what do I do? Just be myself? Might work, Sean, just as long as you don't mention the tramp. The tramp? Figure of speech, as in Susie, the girl you shagged in the hospital. Oh, yeah. That'd be a bad idea, right? This is... Talk about a small world. Very small. I certainly didn't think I'd run into you again. Especially not here. But in a fucked up way, I'm glad I have, because I wanted to talk about the other night. Yeah? Yeah. Look, I don't want this to sound cold, but that was a mistake. A big mistake. You were just in the wrong place at the right time. And I'm not blaming you for the problems with me and my boyfriend, even though you are partly responsible for things going wrong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't go blaming me. What we did has nothing to do with Sean and you. Sean? Yeah. You can't blame me. I never said Sean. I said my boyfriend. No, no, I distinctly heard you say Sean. Lenny, back me up here. Thanks, really. How did you know that my boyfriend's name was Sean? Luck. You know, I was thinking, while we're on the subject, uh -huh. I think it was a mistake bringing us all along. But you wanted to come. Yeah, I know, that was just so I could join in, but on reflection. What? You're here to save a relationship, and you brought along a sociopathic serial data, a guy with porno reactions, and a Miss Know-it-all who pretends to have a job so she doesn't have to stare into the black abyss that is her life. I guess. You may as well have bought the Tin Man, the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion for all the help we are. Well, you're helpful. And as for Vincent and Lenny... Only an idiot would let the two of them go out there unsupervised. Vincent, just answer me one question. Oh. How long have you known that I'm Sean's girlfriend? Now, hold on here. I didn't know about you and Sean until just before we, you know? I'm in the oh. University of Philadelphia. Wait a second. That's where I know you from. He tried to pick me up the other night. Gail! How do you know my name? Just rewind there for a second. You knew about Sean and me before we ended up in... And I'm regretting it as I'm saying it. In bed together. Technically, yes, but we're talking minutes beforehand. Oh, oh, that sounds so much worse than it sounds. I mean, the cafe, the Philadelphia stuff, that was genuine. If it was genuine on her, then why did you try and use it on me? I said genuine, not original. You pay to see the Rolling Stones, you expect to hear the classics. OK, then. And I only tried to pick you up to show Lenny how to do it, so no harm done there. What? Who's Lenny? And you work in the call centre, right? Night shift. I can't believe this. How can you say Sean's your friend and yet you still went ahead even though you knew? You knew! Yeah, and I like to know how you know my name. Is this some kind of sick game you two play? Look, this isn't something you can explain on a crazy golf course. Trust me. You're unbelievable. Me? How am I the bad guy all of a sudden? Look, I didn't make anybody do anything they didn't want to. The main thing is Sean is here. Sean is here? Yeah, and the important thing is that Sean's you... here. I can't deal with this. Yes, you can. Sean's here. Yes, Lenny, I think she gets the message. No! I mean, Sean's here. Gail, what am I going to do? Just speak to him. You can do it. Right, you can do this. Oh, no, I can't do this! What's she doing? She's very bad at confrontation. Oh, shit, Sherlock. I just want to be with Madeline. Sean. <laughs> hey. How's it going? Uh, it's not. 
Listen, I can't talk. I've got to find her. Sean? Sean! What? It's Madeline. She's waiting for you at the pier. Is she? Yeah. How'd you know? Sean, it's me, Jodie. I know. Madeline, would you? Hey, that puts me in the lead. Uh, Gail, not that I really care, but aren't you concerned about your friend, Madeline? Trust me, it's better not to get involved. This is something she really needs to sort out herself. And to be frank, I've been getting a little tired of it all. Blah, 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 Sean's avoiding me, blah, blah, blah. Haven't seen him for weeks, blah, blah, blah. Slept with Vincent, blah, blah, blah. It was rubbish. <laughs> Vincent was rubbish? Well, I don't know if that was her exact words. I know that I should go talk to him. It's just... I did something so stupid, it's going to ruin everything. Madeline. And I don't want us to split up. That's why I ran away here, to avoid him. You two make the perfect couple. Jesus, you're both so selfish. You think this just affects the two of you? Why? Well, what do you mean? What about me? I have to put up with it every night. Sean going on and on and on about it. Listen, if you don't get out there right now and sort this out... I can't face him. Yes, you can. This isn't the playground. You're not five years old. And he loves you. He loves me. It's Sean, in action man. And he's come all the way out here. You work it out. Wallpaper, then. Yeah. This is going to sound stupid, but I'm really pleased to see you. <laughs> yeah. And I almost wish you weren't here, because I've got something to tell you. I did something bad. Really bad. I slept with your friend Vincent. Oh. 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 Wow. <laughs> I expected. I don't really know what I expected. But something a little more x rated than just. Oh. Oh. Sean, if you say oh again. I knew. What? I knew. You knew. Oh my God. And still you came out here. Oh, you poor thing. Madeline, listen. I'm the lowest of the low. Madeline. Lower even. Madeline. What? I did something bad. Really bad. What? What did you do? I don't believe this. 
For a minute there, when I saw you standing next to King Kong, I I was so pleased that you came out here. And I and I thought maybe we had a chance. But now we still have a chance. A chance? People in burning buildings have a chance. People in comas have a chance. Fucking, we don't have a chance, Sean. You fucking slow with someone else! You slow with someone else! It wasn't like that! It's Vincent. It's always like that. It wasn't like that. I'm just going to freshen up. Sure. I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it because I didn't know anything anymore. I didn't know whether I was pretty or ugly or what was happening with us. And now everything's ruined. Everything we've ever done, from our first date, moving in together, everything. We could have just come out here, stood at the pier, shouted at each other, skipped the whole middle part. I'll show you a trick. Uh -huh. All right? Uh, okay. Right. This pound coin, I'll shove all the way through my body. Uh-huh. Into that hand. Okay? Okay. Go along there. Yeah, so. My shoulders down this hand. <laughs> there no. you go. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again? Uh-huh. It takes a lot out of me. <laughs> Do it again. Okay. Okay. No, no pound coins, you understand? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Let me see. No. So how's it going? It's weird. We're sitting there, just talking away like real people. Any interesting side effects? No, none at all. I, mean, I actually, I actually asked her out, straight and simple. You asked her out? Wow! Yeah. So what did she say? Well, she said no, but I asked her. I'm proud of you, Lenny. Um, excuse me, you lost something. Yeah, yeah, I have. I seem to have lost my phone number. I was wondering if I could have yours. Are you taking the piss? Did you see that? Saw it and enjoyed it. If I wasn't such a shallow person, I'd probably be having some sort of crisis of confidence right now. Vincent. What? Just be glad you are such a shallow person. Yeah, thanks, Daddy. <clears throat> you sure you want to do this? It sounds weird, but I just want some kind of, I don't know, some kind of memento. Memento? It's a girl thing, you know. Yeah, sure, getting your photos taken with your ex-boyfriend. Well, ex-boyfriend. Yeah, it does sound weird. Oh, damn. We've got three more. Yeah, right, we can do this. Madeline, hmm? this is the end of the line for us. Who's going to move out? What? Of the flat. One of us will have to move out. But I'm really fond of the flat. Well, so am I. Sean! Oh, damn it! I'm not moving out. End of story. Well, I'm not moving out. End of story. Well, one of us will have to move out. Well, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be me. How do you think it's going? I don't want to argue about this. Is that a serious question? You two, shh. Try to learn something here. We could always share. What? Well, I could sleep there during the day, you could sleep there during the night. Yeah, right, why don't we just go back out then? Fine, forget it. Just like the bad old days, huh? Yeah. It weren't that bad. I know. So, 
our last chance. tell you a story. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, there was this guy I knew, worked night shifts, only his girlfriend, she worked day shifts. Although they shared a flat, they never got to see each other. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, anyway, this guy used to go home after each shift, check the pillow, check the towels, check the soap, basically looking for signs to see if his girlfriend still lived with him. And did she? Well, she did, but then things went a bit haywire. That's not the point. This guy, think about it, he's actually checking the soap to see if it's getting smaller. Don't you think that's just so... Romantic. Romantic? But don't you think it's romantic? Like they were leaving little clues for each other? Oh, I don't know if romantic's the word I was looking for. I think that's a lovely story. Sure. Look, the point is, what I'm trying to get at is... Would you go to bed with me? What? Vincent, leave that girl alone. 